What is going on IF Warriors? So today we have a new video for you regarding a new study that came out looking at intermittent fasting versus just normal habitual dieting um, and which was better for essentially improving your metabolism by uh, improving muscle uh, in and of itself when resistance training is there with people who already are resistance trained males. So it's an interesting thing. Is there going to be a change? It was only a four week study, but let's take a look at it. Now, if you're looking at it here, I already have the table here and I'll break down what ended up happening. Now, as I've always said, before I even go into these studies, I always suspect that intermittent fasting will not be more optimal than if somebody is eating throughout the day, because that is one of the pillars when it comes to uh, protein synthesis. And as I can see here with skeletal muscle, and this is the time-restricted feeding group versus non-time-restricted eating uh, group, you'll see that skeletal muscle was 28.6 on average for the group, and then it ended with a uh, 28.6. So they didn't lose muscle, but they were still doing resistance training while losing uh, fat mass. So you'll see 12.8, then going down to 12.2. However, the non-TRE group lost fat mass 12.7, uh, and then 12.5, not more than the intermittent fasting group has almost always seen in terms of intermittent fasting having that edge in fat mass reduction, as I've always said, uh, but still growing 28.6 to 28.8, growing muscle within this uh, uh, process of losing fat. So still not losing muscle with the TRE group, but also the other group, was building muscle now interesting thing with this study though is that they were looking at uh the the effective uh, effect of time restricted eating and resistance training on high speed strength and body composition so ballistics like uh bench pressing things that are quick high speed high uh reaction uh stuff almost like uh plyometrics but not fully there just uh looking at um strength training that requires explosion right and then they had also jumping um uh and and vertical uh height and, and increasing your vertical height by building the muscles in your legs from from jumping now the super interesting thing is that it ended up being that uh in this study by the way it was published in the diet in the journal of nutrients and it was run by uh, Joanna M. Correa, Correa, Correa uh, and colleagues. Now, the interesting thing that came out of this study is that the TRE had better uh, training uh, with TRE elicited higher values in terms of peak force and dynamic strength index at the level of the upper body with a p-value of 0.05, so it was statistically significant. But that's an interesting thing. The upper body performed better and was better overall uh, than the non-time-restricted uh, uh, um, eating group. However, it was dramatically lower um, for, the, uh, for the lower body. So for, for the legs, it was it was lower. So upper body strength was better for the time-restricted eating group, but the lower body strength was not uh, a better. But keep in mind, this doesn't mean that, oh, that means you're not building lower body strength. You are, they still built lower body strength, still build it at a good clip. It is just that the other group uh, was able to build it at a much better clip. They had a better edge over the time-restricted eating group. And these people are already muscular. They're already athletic. And it was only four weeks. So it's going to be minimal changes, minimal differences. But it's interesting to see that overall, there was no muscle loss from the time-restricted eating group, even though they changed their method of eating. Now, I have to mention this because a lot of people think that everything when it comes to fasting is the same. And even though there are moments that if you're doing intermittent fasting, you can get into a, a point where your muscles start to burn to make glucose, that comes with prolonged fasting, not intermittent fasting those are two different things so if you're going to come in here and be like hey look 
that proves that glucose neogenesis doesn't happen. That's not what what's happening here. That's not what's being read here. This is a 16 hour fast with an eight hour eating window. And more than likely, this group of people, which is 18 males, uh, are not getting into that glucose neogenesis part, which is one of the reasons why the 16-8 tends to be so successful, because most people uh, doing 16-hour fast never get into that uh, part where their, their body is requiring a glucose. But the longer you fast, the more you risk going into that glucose neogenesis. So hopefully that is understood i know this is not easy to understand for a lot of people they see intermittent fasting they think it's the same thing as oh they build muscle intermittent fasting it's like you could do fat you could fast for seven days it's the same thing it's completely different two completely different things prolonged fasting over here something completely different intermittent fasting over here the only thing that's the same is that they have the name fasting in the title um so that is the the uh basically this study's um results Four weeks, 18 meals, time-restricted eating, meaning eight hours of eating, 16 hours of fasting, no muscle loss in both groups, some some uh, uh, increased performance for intermittent fasting in terms of the upper body, like ballistics, uh, ballistic bench pressing, uh, but um, lower body was the edge was given to the other group, and overall, in terms of muscle uh, retention and growth, the non-time restricted eating group had better muscle retention and growth, but the time restricted eating group had a uh, better fat mass loss or fat loss um, when looking at the uh, the actual kgs, the kilograms. So there you have it, guys. It's just. This is what we constantly see. This is what we see on a consistent basis. Intermittent fasting holds the edge on fat loss and uh, uh, non, not doing intermittent fasting, but having a similar uh, calorie uh, reduction uh, or calorie uh, intake um, holds the edge in muscle retention and muscle building. So let me know what you guys think about this study. I'll have it linked down in the description box below. You can take a look at it for yourself. Of course, I've read the study already, but I just want to go into the little important parts so that it doesn't bog you down with me talking about the entire study and looking at every single data point. I looked at the data point that is important to you guys. But I mean, I don't know. Do you want me to read the entire study and break every single thing down? Uh, I think these are, I think these, this is important. I think we'll leave it there. We'll, we'll leave it at, at, at the way that I'm doing it right now. Um, until next time, guys, I'll see you tomorrow. Hit that like, hit that subscribe. This is Edward from Flesh Fitness. Peace out.